Welcome to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. I'm pleased to welcome back to Boom and Bust, Peter Menzies. He's a senior fellow at the McDonald Laurier Institute and a past vice chairman of the CRTC. Welcome back. There's lots to talk about. Thanks very much. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too. And of course, uh, uh, what prompted this interview was your recent Substack article concerning the retreat by, by the Globe Mail and others, for that matter, from their uh, standards of objective journalism. Can you share your thoughts on this matter to start us off? Yeah, well, this came out in a uh, uh, posting by the Globe and Mail through their public editor talking about the review that they'd made of their st journalist standards and practices and how they didn't want to use the word objectivity um, in the pursuit of objectivity anymore. It, I'm reading into it, but it looked to me like this was as a result of a considerable newsroom debate. And it's consistent with a debate that's gone on in a lot of newsrooms, starting in the States and spreading to Canada, following the election of Donald Trump in 2016, where journalists decided that just, you know, reporting what somebody said and then reporting what it was in contrast, um, they called it two sidesism was insufficient and they needed a better pursuit of the truth. Um, and then there was this abandonment of the aspiration towards objectivity, which I find really troubling. Yeah, you're not picking on the Globe Mail per se, but you're saying this is a general trend. I, I suspect it's found in journalism schools as well, right? Yeah, I mean, in a sense, good for the Globe and Mail. They came clean with it, right? And they they came out and said it. And we we think that fairness is a better word and that sort of stuff. But but uh, yeah, it's very much a trend, and I think it's I think it's killing journalism all over North America. You know, I mean, since then, like just last week, we had a a change in leadership at the Washington Post with a a new publisher had come in and was sort of saying, guys, you know, like the We've been doing it this way. It's not working. Nobody's reading your stuff anymore, right? Um, we're losing money like crazy. We need to get back to, a, a, it sounded to me anyway, like a back to a more basics approach and that sort of stuff. Meanwhile, in his exchange with the newsroom, the newsroom was, you know, some members of the newsroom anyway, were fussing about the fact that they're now being led by, to use their words, for white men. And it wasn't there more concern about searching for leadership of was, were there any women of color available and that sort of stuff and the, you could tell the publisher was a little frustrated because he was not unsympathetic to to having you know a good representation in the newsroom but he was like guys right. we got to get going here we got to start making some money <laughs> right we got to start getting well rent. and we gotta... right exactly and you you make the point actually in your substack that readers still want objectivity uh, and so there's this great greater divide happening again between journalism and what the paying public wants out of their content. So can journalism survive this, in your opinion? Uh, not unless they get back to where they were, in my opinion, because I think, you know, there's a lot of discussion right now about the fact that the public doesn't trust journalists. I think what happened is the journalists decided they didn't trust the public. The public was making was making, you know, political decisions. They were voting for what journalists thought were the wrong people, and and so journalists thought they had to intervene. And that, I mean, what a giveaway that is in a way. But you know, I've right. never really cared what a person's. I've worked in newsrooms, and you know, people generally lean to the left. I'm okay with hanging around with people that generally lead to the left, and, and I don't care about them. I care about their work always cared about their work. And what the public wants from its journalists is to give a sound overview of the events of the day and, and you know, pursue, pursue stories, pursue the truth, and leave it up to the reader to come to their own conclusions as to what it means. And, I, and unless we get back to that, I think journalism is just throwing itself over a cliff. Right. And, and people won't put up with it. They'll They'll seek other news sources or won't consume the news. Well, at all. yeah, no, exactly. I mean, it's it's like I think I used a, an analogy. You know, it, it, it's sort of like going into a going into a restaurant and you order chicken, and they bring you pizza because they think right. they think you should have pizza. They don't care what you wanted to eat. 
This is what they've decided you're going to eat. And that relationship won't work in a restaurant. The restaurant won't make any money, and it's sure as heck not going to work for, for a newspaper or a television station. That's incidentally how things worked in the Soviet Union when you ordered in restaurants there. So there you go. Peter, we're going to take yes. a, a brief break. Uh, we'll uh, be back with you after these messages. Please stay with us. 